Hello and welcome to this live interaction with me, Ashish Parikh. Now, Earth is the only habitable planet in the universe that we know of, but that does not mean that it is the only one. In fact, while on one hand, researchers are busy scouting for alien lives, on the other hand, they are also looking for planets that have the potential to harbor life. Now, in the latest, researchers have identified two dozen planets outside our solar system that may have conditions that are more suitable for life than our own planet. In fact, some of these orbit stars that may be even better than our own sun. Now, this study, which was led by Washington State University scientists recently published in the journal Astrobiology, details characteristics of potential superhabitable planets that could include those that are older, a little larger, slightly warmer and possibly wetter than Earth. Now, in fact, these 24 top contenders for superhabitable planets are all more than 100 light years away from Earth. But as per the scientists, they have said that the study could help focus future observation efforts on these 24 planets and that could possibly mean that we could encounter some of the other sort of biomarkers or even, uh, you know, possibility of these planets harboring life. To speak to us more about this and also decipher this particular study, we have with us our expert for the day, Senior Professor Jayant Muthi from Indian Institute of Astrophysics. First of all, Professor Muthi, thanks a lot for joining us. My first question to you is, uh, you know, the, this particular study uses the term super habitable. Now, we of course have come across planets that could possibly be habitable. What, what exactly does super habitable planet mean? You know, it's a made up word. And uh, really, when we talk about habitable planets, mm -hmm. we have to be careful because what we when we say habitable, mm -hmm. we mean something that looks like the Earth. Okay. That means it's, uh, it has liquid water, it has oxygen, it's in a nice place in the, uh, uh, in, in, near the star, but not too near, not too far. Mm -hmm. So, so it's very earth centric. So these people are saying super habitable, meaning maybe a little more water, maybe a little warmer, what, whatever criteria they use. Mm -hmm. But really, we don't know where life can be. Mm -hmm. uh, may, maybe you have uh, life that doesn't look like ours. Yeah. So, so uh, super habitable is a is a relative term. Okay. Also, uh, Professor, now, for example, our sun has relatively shorter lifespan of less than about 10 billion years. And since it took nearly 4 billion years before any form of complex life appeared on Earth, many similar stars to our sun called the G stars might possibly, you know, uh, run out of fuel before complex light could even potentially develop around the planets that are, are orbiting it. So the targets for this particular study were younger and cooler G stars. In addition to looking at these particular G stars, the researchers also looked at systems with K dwarf stars, which are basically uh, cooler, less massive and less luminous than our own sun. K stars that uh, these scientists are talking about have the advantage of long lifespans of about 20 billion to 70 billion years. Now, this could this particular lifespan could allow orbiting planets to be older and at the same time uh, be, uh, you know, they could be able to give life. Um, it could possibly have more time for the life to advance uh, and gain the kind of complexity that it has gained on Earth. So first of all, uh, you know, uh, Professor Moti, what exactly are G stars, K dwarf stars and how long could it possibly take? Uh, you know, life to develop on any planet apart from Earth. Earth, we know, you know, how long it took for life to develop. On other planets, you know, is there a duration as such? Or again, it de depends on the conditions that are there surrounding that. Yeah, that's the critical question. When we search for life, we just don't know. We, we have a sample size of one. Mm -hmm. If I go out, uh, I've never uh, played cricket, but if I go out and take a cricket, uh, I mean, and, and hit a six, mm -hmm. I'll say, wow, it's cricket is so easy. Yeah. So on the Earth, we've got life, mm -hmm. and, and so we say it's easy to form life. But we really don't know. We only have this one, one example. Mm -hmm. So when you say it takes uh, maybe life formed on the Earth within 100 million years after, after the Earth uh, cooled down enough. So, so we, we don't know. Now, when you're mm -hmm. looking at uh, stars like the Sun, mm -hmm. the Sun is, is a very nice star in that uh, the Earth is, uh, there's a good, good uh, habitable zone where we have liquid water and so on. Mm -hmm. If you start to get to cooler stars, now the problem is that then you have to get closer to the star. Okay. So K stars are very small and cool. They're, uh, the, the sun is, has a surface temperature of about 6,000 degrees. Mm -hmm. These K stars might have a surface temperature of 3,000. So you can imagine that the planet has to be much closer because the star puts up less heat. Now, if the planet is very close to the star, mm -hmm. now you start to get the uh, tidal interactions, like the moon is uh, phase-locked to the Earth, mm -hmm. so you only see one phase. If you have a planet going around a K-star, it might only uh, 
uh, only one face star, only one face of the planet okay. might face the star. So you might have one hot face, one cold face. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have a moon around that planet, though. So that that will solve that problem. Yeah. So we just don't know enough. Yeah. We don't know enough to say that uh, that we should look around K stars or G stars. The reason we say G stars is because the Earth is around a G star. Okay. But but really, that's that's all it is. Now, the study is important because uh, they, they're looking at, uh, at the Kepler archive, mm-hmm. and they're saying that these planets do look somewhat like the Earth. So we should look at them more. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't pay too much attention to the super habitable business. There. That's just a press release. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, interestingly, they have really listed out some sort of uh, other features why they are particularly calling this particular, you know, all of these group of stars as super habitable stars. For example, they say Earth is around 4.5 billion years old, but the, you know, but these researchers argue that the sweet, sweet spot for life uh, at a planet is around 5 billion to 8 billion years old. And also they've said that uh, for a planet to be uh, super habitable, size and mass also matters. For example, a planet that is 10 times larger than that of Earth should have more habitable land and also one that is about 1.5 times Earth's mass would be expected to retain its interior heating through radioactive decay longer and would have also, you know, also would have a stronger gravity to retain an atmosphere over a longer period of time. So, you know, all of these things are interesting. Like you rightly said, this particular term super habitable has been coined to in fact, you know, go ahead and uh, point towards the fact that this could possibly be much more habitable than the other planets that have been uh, spoken about in the past. But let's put all of this into perspective. Let's assume that, you know, uh, this entire, uh, the, the habitability of these planets is established and a presence of all of these planets is also established. How do we exactly communicate and is it even remotely possible to, you know, send a probe and actually assess the information that has been collected, cross check, cross verify and, you know, be certain that, okay, we are assuming such and such things and this is in fact the situation there. Is it possible to send a probe given the fact that these planets are over 100 light years away? Yeah, you know, we're always limited by the speed of light. Mm And uh, no matter, uh, and even more so uh, because none of our probes go anywhere near the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Uh, As you know, Voyager has been out now for uh, 33 years, if I I did my math correctly. Yeah, uh, 43 years. And yet uh, they're they're not even out of the solar system. So the amount of time that it takes to get anywhere in our universe it's just too long to actually send probes there and and come back, at least within our lifetime. Mm-hmm. I, I still think we should do it. I think we should sit, send a probe out to, to Proxima Centauri, our nearest star, which is only uh, four light years away. Yeah. And uh, I, that, that would be a generational mission. And, and who knows what we might find. Yeah. But to, to send probes out to 100 light years, that, that would take three, 400 years. 600 years to reach and, and send, to send things back, it would just take far too long. Mm-hmm. Also, we, we what know we're better off doing is remote sensing, like look for water in the atmosphere, yep. things like that. Yeah. Again, we're getting into all of these sci-fi discussions that, you know, a lot of people usually fascinate about, about if there's a possibility to send probes so far and, you know, assess uh, the presence of life or even biomarkers of life. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor, for joining us in this live interaction. Uh, This is exactly what these scientists are also talking about. These planets are super habitable. That means that these have conditions, possibly have conditions that are better than Earth to harbor life. But do they have life? Do they, uh, you know, actually have some sort of uh, extremophiles that are there? You know, all of these questions remain unanswered at this point in time. Do let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. And also do not forget to like, share and subscribe to News9 Digital. Thanks for watching.